Won't you please welcome Dr. Jeremy Siegel. Thank you. Um, Amy. Thank you, Amy. I think this microphone may not be working. This, this. Okay? Okay, fantastic. You can hear me okay? Great. Well, um, uh, you know, as evidenced by the title of this talk, uh, you may be in for some shocking images. If, <clears throat> if this disturbs you, I suggest that maybe you take a break uh, and come back uh, in about an hour. Um, but you're here, I mean, you know, uh, it must mean something. So obviously this is of great interest to uh, most uh, human beings, uh, being naked or uh, exposure and that sort of thing. And I think this might be a little bit of a different take on whatever you might have thought about exhibitionism um, uh, to date. Um, so I'm going to be talking about exhibitionism through the lens of three contemporary artists, Marina Abramovic, Gabriel Martinez, and Nobuyoshi Araki. And um, exhibitionism seems to be that thread that uh, kind of connects these otherwise disparate uh, artists. Um, now, exhibitionism occurs in art dating back millennia. I mean, if you just, just look at the ancient Venus of Willendorf from thousands of years ago. Uh, I don't see much in the way of clothing there. Um, now, in Greek amphora also, um, not much uh, clothing. Mene's luncheon on the grass, a little more recent. Uh, and very recent, Robert Maplethorpe. Um, and let, let, me, let me distinguish, though, between... Okay, we're, I've skipped ahead here, but let, let me distinguish uh, between the nude, the nude in art, and exhibitionism right away. Although, think about it, I mean, how could they not overlap? The nude in art is the celebration, or at least the study, of the human form. This might include an appreciation of its elegance and seeing beauty in its imperfections as well. Exhibitionism is concerned with the reaction, a display or revealing to, to cause a stirring in another, or to prove a point, or as a tool for self-empowerment. We know about nudity, but what, or we think we know about nudity, but what, what is exhibitionism? These often become commingled. Classically, we think of the streaker. For example, the, the other day when I was at a cricket match, um, that's a joke, I, I, I just, <laughs> this happened, and um, I think that's cricket, I mean, I'm guessing. Um, you know, we, we think of the streaker, or the person in the trench coat on a football field or at a wedding, a flasher in the park, or worse, uh, some creepy guy in his car waiting for people to get off at the bus stop, uh, as happened to someone I know uh, who was particularly vulnerable to this sort of thing, and feigning asking for directions and horrifying uh, someone with his own compass already leading him down a, a bad path. And uh, here we have another example I mean, this is, uh, yeah, that's kind of a half-assed attempt. I mean, the, the bras and panties, I mean, there we go. That's, that's a little better. And, you know, I mean, there's this. Uh, <laughs> I know, isn't that great? I mean, it's just funny. Um, and so, yeah, we're good. So, uh, anyway, now, as uh, speakers are wont to do, uh, we can always cop to the DSM definition of anything. Uh, and, and sort of feign uh, deep knowledge. Um, so let's, let's, uh, let's just get to the DSM, then we can kind of move on from there. But here we have the DSM definition, recurring, intense, sexually arousing behaviors or fantasies of genital exposure to, unsuspecting, to an unsuspecting stranger. And of course, the caveat must cause distress, that is to say, for the exhibitionist, uh, or impair social or occupational functioning uh, for greater than six months, so I suppose not just in the moment, uh, moments before the handcuffs uh, are, are placed, uh, to make the diagnosis. Now, um, but once we, we, we move from here, yeah, I'll just keep it on here. Let's consider a more dynamic definition, which generalizes to a much broader definition of the term exhibitionist. 
exhibition, exhibit, different definitions give us a clue about how broad indeed this may be. And, and so we can refer to the broad view as we inspect artists who take off their own clothes or by proxy take off others' clothes. The Latin exhibir, to display. Uh, exhibit, for example, the, the Random House gives us uh, a transitive verb, to offer or expose to view, to present for inspection, or to manifest or display, to exhibit anger, to place on show, to exhibit paintings, or to make manifest or to explain. A legal definition is to submit a document, an object, in evidence in a court of law, Exhibit A. And uh, the best of these, I think, is this, um, this definition here, uh, or at least most, most relevant to proving my point in this talk. Uh, this is more of a medical uh, definition, to administer something as a remedy. As a remedy. This is very, very interesting. Is exhibitionism devising a solution to a problem? Could the exhibitionistic art then be a remedy for a chronic emotional condition? And, uh, and finally, number seven is uh, to make or to give an exhibition, to present something to public view. And so in that, perhaps all art is indeed in some way exhibitionistic, and uh, then perhaps all human relating is in some sense exhibitionistic, even, even in the era before Facebook where Life is now one big uh, exhibit. Um, but uh, and now just uh, very quickly, of course, uh, the noun form, uh, two definitions. One, a tendency to behave in such a way as to attract attention, very generic, very bland. But then psychiatry gives us, of course, a disorder characterized, characterized especially by a compulsion to exhibit the genitals. So those are the two, uh, it, it sum up psychiatry in, in two words there. Again, we see the one-track mind of <laughs> psychiatry. So uh, basically, um, and again, uh, you can sort of leap to what is this? I mean, what is this lecture uh, today? It is, is this just an art exhibit or discussing art, contemporary art? But you'll see that it's, it's a little more exciting than that, I think. And so um, I don't want to you know, build it up too much. I mean, it's, not, it's, it's OK, but yeah. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> okay, so in our consideration of the three artists' work, is this satisfaction of a compulsion? I mean, we have to figure out what, what is this exactly? When we look at these artists, um, when we look at these artists, are we just, uh, I mean, is this truly a satisfaction of some kind of compulsion uh, to expose genitalia? I mean, could it not be then just maybe uh, a carefree boob or testicle caught in the breeze? I mean, we don't know. We don't know, but we're going to, I mean, it could be. I mean, you know, we have bodies. We like them. We, you know, it doesn't have to be always sort of a, you know. So uh, now, and it, and it could also be. It could also be a compulsion to expose all these other kind of more ineffable uh, versions of uh, exhibitionism, uh, powers, personality, all that kind of thing. So, you know, keep these in mind. Now, there's a great slim volume by uh, a, a, an analyst named Carr, uh, K-H-R, who uh, I'm gonna quote him because I like this. He, he says, as personalities go, uh, the genital exhibitionists tend to be timid, actually, lacking in social skills and quite obsessional. Unsurprisingly, the typical exhibitionist, as Lassigue reported more than 100 years ago, possesses very little insight into his offending behavior. So clearly there is a demarcation between the garden variety genital exhibitionist and the kind of exhibitionism we find in the work of these artists, these artists that you haven't even seen yet, but we're gonna to get there very quickly. Now, a term, let me just say quickly that there is a term that's used often in my reading of this that it's, of course, it's fraught with difficulty today in 2009, that word is perverse. And so I take that to mean paraphilic. So it's something that's any maladaptive sexual uh, behavior. Uh, so Freud recognized, this is from Carl, so Freud recognized that sexually perverse people, including exhibitionists, will overtly enact their libidinal desires, while the more repressed neurotics will only fantasize about perverse desires and refrain from gross forms of acting out. Neuroses are, so to say, the negative of perversion. 
Uh, so you might, for example, if you're a neuro 